So hopefully you weren't jumping into this playlist thinking you were going to get to a lot of gameplay really quickly. Again, the question I mentioned, I noticed this is video 51. The question, the whole thing that kind of sparked me doing this playlist was I often have uh, students come to me and say, Hey, Jamie, how do I build a game engine? And um, being a game programmer by choice, I mean, you're really signing up for for basically the hardest, most challenging programming that I'm aware of, but it's a lot of fun. But it's not the same fun that you have when you play a game. Playing a game is a much different experience. And creating a game is a different experience than creating the supporting tools and engine that run the game. So the question is, how do I build a game engine? That's what we're building. And if you're hoping to jump straight into game programming, well, this is definitely not the playlist for it, for you. But if you're interested in in the material that I'm presenting to you, obviously you are because you've made it to video 51-ish, then good job. Okay, let's, uh, but that, that said, let's, let's get our ship moving and doing something more interesting than just flying around. I'm going to set this as the startup project, control of five, hopefully we build, we're good. I can use the arrow keys, move the ship around, feeling good about that. And actually, I was feeling pretty good about it when we got it going, too. So let's go to my GA. Oh, is this a sandbox game? No, it's my GL window.cpp. Okay, let's go to this file. I'll look at all those those includes. Just think of all the stuff that's being included here. Ah! <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. In the update function, update velocity. Now, this update velocity, we just said whichever way the key is pointing, let's just move the ship that way. But I'm going to refactor this a little bit. Instead of saying update velocity, I'm going to, well, that would be a good, let's say, we'll do this, rotate ship, and then we'll update the ship's velocity. And I'm going to copy this and paste this here, because we're actually going to do the rotation stuff in here, and then the velocity we'll do elsewhere. So let's go to the header file for my GL window, update velocity, void, rotate ship, like so, so, now we have rotate ship, now we need to add back in void, my GL window, update, velocity. Okay, so this is where I'm going with this, I'm, I'm trying to get a more asteroids kind of feel to it. So let's say our ship is pointed this way, if I hit the right arrow, I expect the ship to turn that direction. If I hit the left arrow, I expect the ship to turn that direction. So left and right, we're going to use left and right in in this function. But then the up and down, actually I guess we'll just use the up. But when I push up, I want some fire to come out of the back of the ship. And then the ship should move this way, or accelerate, and again we're simulating space, so the ship will move that direction and keep accelerating that direction and keep going on until I rotate the ship and until it goes somewhere else. So we're going to handle this logic in this function, and then we're going to handle turning the ship in this function. Let me clear that out. Uh, okay, so up. We're no longer going to do down. The ship's just going to go forward no matter what, so if you want to go backwards, you have to ship, turn the ship around. I'll get to this later for now, and the acceleration is going to come down here, too. Uh, and then when I say right, ship velocity dot x plus equals, not acceleration, I want to rotate the ship. All right? We want to make the ship go round and round and round if we hold the right arrow key down. Well, we don't, we don't have a variable where we're storing the, the direction of the ship. So let's add one. First of all, remember our coordinate system. This is x, this is y, and a positive rotation in what we're going to do will be this way. And so really what we need to maintain is an angle. And I'm going to use radians because that's what I like to use. We need to use an angle of rotation. So that's going to be a float. Let's just store it up here with everything else we're doing. Ship velocity vector, not vector, it's going to be a float, ship orientation, get 0, 0.0, f, do the proper constant, and then down here, if you're pushing the right key, 
Then we'll say, uh, let's do const float angular movement. And I'm just going to guess here, 0.1 maybe, perhaps? It's radians, I don't know. Let's Maybe we'll go a little more extreme. Let's do, let's do 0.1 instead of 0.01. And then I'm going to say ship, ship, control space, uh, orientation, plus equals. Now, if we're going right, that's actually going to be a negative angular movement. And if we're going left, that's going to be a positive one. So control L, control V. Uh, actually, control shift L, control V, but then we can say it's positive. Now, I should actually just rely on these operators here and be as consistent as possible. So, if we're going right, do a negative or, uh, negative rotation. If, if we're going left, then do a positive one. And then for velocity, I'm just going to comment this out now, because I think in this video, if we can get the ship to turn, I'm happy, and we'll come back and patch that later. So here's the update. Rotate ship, update velocity, ship position, blah, 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 blah. So remember in the repaint, we do this paint GL, and literally, one by one, we go through every single one of the ship's vertices, and we move them from their original spot. We Well, we maintain the originals, but then we make these, these uh, modified versions, and we say, well, if the... Uh, let, let, let's just, let, let me review. Let me, I think it's best if I just review. Here's our, our coordinate system. And then we set up our vertices so our ship is something like this. And then notice we don't, we don't, uh, we don't modify those verts here. If I click here and hit F12, we never modify these actual verts here. Instead what we do is I say, let's, um, let's get a copy or, or another array of vertices. And then one by one, we're going to take the original vertices, we're going to add the ship position, and that's going to be our translated verts. And then I use this GL function call that I don't expect you to understand completely, but essentially I say, hey GL, here's the updated values to draw. When we get to the graphics section, I'm going to show you a much better way of doing this, but for now this works. Hey GL, draw those verts in that location. And that's called translation, and that's why I call this translated verts. But now, not only are we going to do a translation, meaning move the ship around, but we're going to allow the ship to rotate as well. Okay? And we're going to use our matrix to do that. So I can't call it translated verts anymore, because we're going to rotate. I can't call it rotated verts, because we also are going to add a translate in here, or we'll add the translate back in. So what should we call it? I'm going to call it trans formed verts. All right, we're doing linear transformations. Okay, and then transform verts are the ones that we want to send down to OpenGL. All right, let's do the rotate. First things first, I need the matrix to do the rotate. And we made a matrix. So matrix, we need a using, using, oops, we need a pound include and a using. Pound include matrix math uh, matrix and just to be consistent I forgot that's in the engine project another project or additionally include directory so I have to use the angle brackets uh, let's alphabetize these like I like to within their order of importance I don't well I guess T comes after him let's put that down there I was putting clock above these but we'll do it with respect to the actual subdirectory name and then we're going to say using math matrix 2D. Okay, down here, again, like we did before, all we need to do is use our matrix to do some multiplication. I'm going to say matrix 2D op for operator uh, gets matrix colon colon matrix 2D colon colon rotate. And we want to rotate that by the ship orientation. And then here I said verts plus ship position. Well, watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this out for now. I'm just going to say, hey, you know what? Let's apply that operator to each vert one by one and throw them into transform verts. Okay. Drum roll, please. Control F5. And there we go. Should I, should I push the right arrow down or the left arrow? Let's see what happens. Now we're rotating. That's kind of cool. But look at it for a minute. Does that look 
like what we should expect. It's kind of rotating, but it's kind of warping while it rotates. And it's like here it's a weird triangle, and then here it's kind of a flatter triangle what we started with. So, you know, whenever I have one of the vertices straight up, we have this nice kind of flattish ro or triangle. But then uh, as I rotate it like this, it kind of warps into a different triangle. Well, the reason why is because of our viewports. I know I've mentioned this on previous videos, but let me just put the coordinate system back on the screen here. And if I say, remember our vertices, we said go 0.1 over here on the X. And since the X axis is bigger than the Y axis, 0.1 means more out here. Here's 0.1. Whereas 0.1 in the Y, oops. Point one in the Y is not as far, actually. Let me let me start this again. Point one in the X is right here, but then point one in the Y is not as far. So as I rotate this, it's kind of stretching and shrinking with the with the uh, window. And you also notice it's not even rotating. It's like it's not even rotating on its center. All right? You see that? There's no like it's over here and then it's over here. It's not really rotating on the center. So how are we going to fix that? Well, we need to make our viewport square. That or we need to do some better math. So that point one, we change the distance of the vertices depending on where the ship is. Um, the second option is much more mathematical. Yeah, we'll get there. Don't worry. But I think for now, let's just make sure we have a square viewport. So I'm going to uh, go down here. Where's our Where's our update? In our update, this probably isn't the best place to put it, but I, I want to, if I bring this up again, I want, I want a square viewport, which means I'm going to cut off roughly there and roughly there. Well, that's not a square. Maybe I have to come in more, but ideally I have the, the, the width is the same as the height. Okay, now I can grab this window and resize it. You see the triangle changes shape as I do. Because right now the viewport is based completely off of the size of the window. And so if I have this small window, I have this nice fat wide triangle and or a nice thin triangle. But no matter uh, whether it's shorter or taller, I know I want to take up a square region of the screen. So I'm going to... Do I have a viewport? I thought we... Yeah, okay. Paint GL. We could probably do this in a better spot, but let me just make sure. Let me get rid of that line of code I put in there. Um... Ideally, we, we only update the viewport as necessary. Right now, we're doing it on every paint. We'll optimize that as we get into graphics later. But for now, I want to say, hey, what's the um, what's the min size? Okay, and I'm going to take the min of the width and the height. And min is a simple mathematical function. It just says, well, which one of you guys is smaller? We're going to use that. And then I'm going to say, well, whichever one is which, let's do min size and min size and we can build that run that and that should there we go but now the problem is our viewport we said it's going to start at zero zero in the window and uh and it goes over the you notice that this looks roughly center if i measure the distance from here to here and then i take that length and i double it i'm just going to eyeball it but maybe out to there well now we have this nice square viewport and the rest of this is wasted which I'm fine with we'll come back and figure that out later but for now we have this nice square viewport but I'd rather have the viewport in the center of the screen first of all let's see if we fixed our rotation issue I'm going to hit the right arrow and yeah that looks better not perfect but better if you see the triangle is rotating not around its center we still gotta solve that issue but first of all I wanna solve the viewport issue. I want to put the viewport right in the middle of the screen. Well, how are we going to do that? Well, we need to know the width of our viewport, so let's just say that's the width. I'm going to eyeball that. All right, and I need to move it roughly. I need to take this square here and put it right here. Just kind of guessing. Well, maybe a little further right, but hopefully get the idea. Well, how are we going to get that? How are we going to get... I need this position right there right there because that's where we pass that in to GL viewport I, I don't want that upper left hand corner anymore to be at zero zero I want it to be uh, right there so I need that location well this should be 
Some pretty straightforward math, I hope. Let's find the, and th this is going to be true in both the x and the y direction. Let's find the center of the screen. Okay, so that will be width, width divided by 2. And then I want to back off from there half of this width that we've chosen. Okay, so that's going to be min divided by 2. So let's see if we can, uh, let, me, let me erase this stuff. I want to keep the equations on the screen so we can refer to them as we're programming. Most of my programming requires a lot of writing, which I think is good just to keep things straight in my head. Okay, so let's say float. Oh, well, what does viewport take? I think we're dealing with pixels at this point. If I can, whoops, get rid of that. Control shift space. Uh, yeah, it takes int. So they're just integer positions. Width and height return integer positions as well. So let's just stay with int. Int uh, viewport. Actually, vector two d viewport viewport location. And we'll say viewport location dot x gets the uh, width divided by two minus min size divided by two. And then I'm just going to try this. Let's say viewport location dot x. We'll get to the y in a second, but let's just try the x here. And, oh, I can't. I gotta shut it down first before I try to build it again. Build. Boom, there we go. Nice in the center of the screen. Good. But then if I grab this and I go, here, here's our issue. Oh, look, I left a little bit there. That's probably bugging you. You probably noticed that. And I let, Oh, there's another one. I let it bug you. It bugs me when teachers do that, too. The uh, See, as I stretch this window way high, we're not, the, the viewport's no longer centered in the screen. We, we're centered on the X if we can go we bring it out and x wins here we're going to be centered on the x but is the y we didn't do anything for the y so let's take the y into account as well uh, view port math's going to be very similar dot y gets height divided by 2 minus min size divided by 2 control of 5 oh I should probably use that value as well uh, viewport Location dot y. Now I could have just simply typed these equations directly into here, but I think readability helps. If I can add a variable name that adds some readability to the code, then I'll do such. Uh, there we go. Let's uh, see if this works. See, centered on the y. Nice. Centered on the x. Y. Okay. Notice this triangle still shrinks and grows, but it's doing it uniformly, which I'm happy with. So, next issue though is we're not we're not rotating around a perfect center, but I think that's something we'll address in the next video. It's going to be, it's actually going to be a cheap fix.